All right, we're going to do a book problem, uh, an impulse, uh, impulse problem, where we have a ball of wet clay dropping off a workman's scaffold. It falls for four seconds before hitting the ground. If it comes to rest in 5.0 milliseconds, what average force did the force exert on the clay? So this is a combination of uh, kinematics and momentum, uh, kinematic motion and momentum. So if you've got this ball of clay, okay, and here's the floor, and the ball drops to the floor, it's going to accelerate to the ground because of gravity, okay, and hit the ground, and then it's going to, so here's the free fall episode and then here's momentum impulse it splats on the ground let's draw that better so this is the impulse momentum impulse and momentum so in free fall, we've got a situation where we're going from A to B, and in impulse, we're going from B to this C situation. So now the velocity at C here is equal to zero. The velocity at A is also equal to zero. Okay, we're going to start. It drops off the workman's scaffold. It's not thrown down, so it doesn't have initial velocity. It doesn't have velocity at the start. The start is A. And this velocity at B is equal to question mark. We don't know. But we do know that it falls for four seconds. Okay, and we know it has an initial velocity of zero, and we know that because it's free fall, the gravity or the acceleration due to gravity or acceleration in the y direction is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second, right? So uh, in the kinematic world, we can use velocity, uh, excuse me, velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. And we can plug in numbers for this. So velocity final, well, that's the velocity at B, right as it's hitting the ground. Uh, initial velocity is 0. That's a 0. Plus acceleration is negative 9.81. And 4 seconds is the time that it falls for, the time that it falls for. Calculating for B equals velocity B equals negative 39.2 meters per second. Now, with the impulse and momentum part, let's use yellow for impulse and momentum, okay? We're going from B to C. So from when I say B to C, we're going from where it has a velocity right when it's hitting the ground to splat. Uh, it comes to rest and splats on the ground. And that time it takes to come to rest is 5.0 milliseconds. Okay, so that time for our impulse and momentum side of things is 5.0 milliseconds. Well, milli is equal to 10 to the negative third, so that means that's 10 to the negative third seconds. So 5 times 10 to the negative third seconds, that's milliseconds. So, again, we got to uh, convert to seconds. Uh, now, that's the time. How does that help us? We're looking for the average force that the floor exerts on the clay. So, this, this floor is what's stopping the clay, obviously. Uh, well, where does impulse and momentum come into the situation? Well, we have the impulse-momentum theorem, where impulse, force times time, that's impulse, is equal to the change in momentum. Uh, we can calculate the initial momentum and the final momentum 
and figure out what the difference is and uh, we can plug in for time and solve for force. So force is what we're solving for. The time interval, this is the time interval. And that force times time, that impulse is equal to mass of the object times final velocity minus mass of the object times initial velocity. Another way to write that would be that would be like this, uh, where we pull the mass out and we just find the difference between our velocities. Our final velocity, it turns out, is velocity c. So instead of writing that vf, let's write it as v c, velocity c. And our initial velocity is actually velocity p. So let's call it what it is. Uh, because that's the initial velocity uh, right before impact. Uh, so now we can plug uh, numbers in. So plugging our numbers in, we've got 20 for the mass, that's up here, times 0, which comes to rest, and minus a negative 39.2, that comes from over here, the velocity of p. And now just calculate and solve for force. Divide both sides by 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Force is equal to 156,800 newtons. And that's it. Uh, keep in mind, we're going from kin kinematics to impulse. So, you know, we used to call this initial velocity and final velocity when we just dealt with free fall and kinematics. So now because there's more than just that episode, we've kind of got to specify an A, B, C situation uh, and, and understand that the final velocity in kinematics is becoming the initial velocity for impulse and momentum.